here are some unusual moment of inertia questions. We start with 2002. And the reason I start with this one is because part three is unusual, but more importantly, part one indicates how we're going to do the first four unusual questions. It relates this thing or refers to this thing called mass per unit area, which is sort of like a two dimensional density for the shape. And whenever an object is uniform, the mass per unit area of the entire shape is equal to the mass per unit area of any part of that shape. And we'll see that in the next three questions that's used very frequently. Again, if the, if the shape is uniform, the mass per unit area of the entire shape equals the mass per unit area of any part of the shape. Okay, but let's have a look at number three or part three. If M is equal to 100 grams and A is equal to 10 centimetres, how much work is done in bringing this wheel and spoke to rest from 6,000 revolutions per minute? So this is a work theorem. Um, how much work is done is the same as how much kinetic energy is lost by the wheel. So it's as straightforward as using the rotational kinetic energy formula and equating it to the work done. The I value, uh, the moment of inertia, is given in part two, so we can plug that in. And then the last part is just getting the W. Now you should remember that W is equal to two pi over uh, T so that we can use the period formula to get the W value. And with 6,000 revolutions per minute, what we're looking for is to calculate um, the T value from that. So 6,000, sorry, 60 over 6,000 would be the periodic time. That's two pi over W. And then when you rearrange it, you get W is equal to 200 pi. All right, let's have a look at 2014. We have a uniform disk of mass m and radius r oscillates as a compound pendulum about a horizontal axis perpendicular to the plane through a point o on its circumference. So the axis is going into the board and it's at the point o on the outside. Find the period of small oscillations. That should be straightforward because it's simply a disk, a uniform disk as well. Okay, so you, you'll calculate that, you'll bank it for later on. Then we're told that a mass of 0.2m is removed by drilling a circular hole through the centre of the disc. So now what's happened is the mass of the disc has changed because 0.2m is removed from it. And if the mass uh, it changes, then the moment of inertia has to change as well with that mass. So <clears throat> the first thing we need to do, we'll come back to that, is because there's a mass removed, its moment of inertia needs to be subtracted from the total shape. So the moment of inertia originally was a half big M R squared plus big M R squared um, using the parallel axis theorem. And because we're cutting out um, the shape in the middle, we need to subtract the moment of inertia of that shape. So that's the minus a half bracket 0.2 M by X squared, X being the radius of that uh, shape cut out. And then in the parallel axis theorem, when we're shifting it through M D squared, we also have to remove a 0.2 M there because of the decrease in mass. Now, of course, the issue here is how do you get the x? How do you get the radius of that internal circle, that circle that's been cut out? And we use what I mentioned in the previous slide because it's a uniform disk. The mass of the entire, sh the, sorry, the density of the entire shape equals the density of the part cut out, or mass per unit area of the entire shape, m over pi r squared, is equal to mass per unit area of the internal shape. So mass is 0.2m and the area is pi x squared. Get a value for x squared, sub it into the line below, and then you can work out the moment of inertia. Okay, just to finish it off then, uh, we're, look, we're wondering what the effect of removing um, a mass of 0.2m is to increase the period of small oscillations by a factor of 4 over k, find k. So you take part 1, the period of small oscillations, You'd use the moment of inertia of 1.28 mr squared at the end, get the period of small oscillations after the part is removed, put one over the other, and you'd get um, an equation that looks like 4 over the square root of something, and you're just looking for that something. Okay, 2018. We have a wheel consists of a uniform circular disk of radius r with four circular holes, each of radius 1 quarter r. The centre of the holes form a square and each centre is a half R from the centre of the disc O, so that's the big disc. 
is on the uh, point on the circumference of the wheel, which is equidistant from the centre of the top two holes. If m is the mass of the wheel after the holes have been punched in it, show that m over 12 is the mass of the material removed to create each hole. So again, in this case, we're going to use mass per unit area of the entire shape equals mass per unit area of each of the holes. The thing to remember here is um, I would let the mass of the hole be x, so you'd have the mass of the entire shape would be m plus 4x all over pi r squared, and that's going to be equal to x for the mass of one hole all over uh, pi by one quarter of r all to be squared because the radius of each of those holes is a quarter of r. So basically, density of the total shape equals density of the small circles. x then would work out as m over 12. Okay, for part two, we're looking to find the moment of inertia of the wheel about an axis through O perpendicular to the plane of the wheel. So it's going perpendicular to the board. To do this, you need the moment of inertia of the entire shape, and you're going to subtract off um, the moment of inertia of four of those shapes all about the point O. And then the last part, the wheel can turn freely in a vertical plane about an axis through A to the plane of the wheel. Given that the period of small oscillations of the wheel is that, find the value of k correct in two decimal places. I'm taking part two. I'm using the parallel axis theorem to shift the moment of inertia up to the axis A. Um, that gives me the moment of inertia. The h value between the axis of rotation and the centre of the object is r, and I'm using my period of small oscillation formula. You should be able to get it. Okay, let's pause there.